the Uluru, or so-called Ayas Rock, explained in under three minutes. Chapter 1. The Geology Around 530 million years ago, mountain building events in the newly formed Australian tectonic plate created a mountain range, similar to today's Alps and Himalayas. These mountains had strong igneous granite outcrops on top, which over time shredded off and got transported down to the valley of the mountain range. Millions of years of erosion shrank these mountains again and buried the layers of weathered granite with kilometers of material, which compacted it again to form extremely hard sandstone called arcos. Around 130 million years after the initial mountain building event, a second one shoved these sandstone layers to the surface again, flipping the now hardened arcos 90 degrees in the process. This flipping made the rock stretch multiple kilometers vertically. Another hundreds of millions of years of erosion removed the softer rock around the hardened sandstone layer, which finally led to the uncovering of this magnificent rock structure, which we now call Uluru. Chapter 2. The History The Central Australian region has long been inhabited by the Aboriginal people Anangu, for which the land around them is an inseparable and important part of their identity. Uluru lays right in the heart of their land and is considered a sacred resting spot for ancestral spirits, which are said to have created the land. European settlers have discovered the Uluru rock formations in the 1870s, where it received its westernized name, Ayas Rock. Fifty years after the first contact with Europeans in 1921, these areas were declared Aboriginal reserves, which might sound like a respectful acknowledgement of the lands. In reality, however, these reserves were a means of isolating and controlling Aboriginal people. It depleted them of basic human rights, taking away the rights of movement, custody of children, and the right to own property. It wasn't until October 1985 that the Australian government returned the ownership of the land to the Anangu people, but only under the condition that the land will immediately be leased back to the National Parks and Wildlife Agency for 99 years following the handover. Chapter 3. Tourism Today, the National Park is in joint supervision of Aboriginal people and the Australian National Park Agency. Ever since the 1930s, the area is of touristic interest but tourist facilities like accommodation, built close to Uluru in the 1950s, found to have detrimental effect on the environment in the National Park. In the coming decades, all facilities were moved around 15 kilometers outside of the National Park to protect the heritage. With the handing back of the land rights to the Anangu people, climbing Uluru was initially allowed for tourists, even though the Anangu preferred that, as guests on Anangu land, tourists respect the culture and do not climb on Uluru. Controversies in the late 2010s, with tourists doing striptease and playing golf on this sacred landmark, finally led to a climbing ban on October 26, 2019. If you enjoy videos like this one, make sure to subscribe and leave a like. Cheers!